In this video we're going to look at the Gibbs energy and the conditions for a spontaneous process which occurs at constant temperature and constant pressure. So we have from the first law of thermodynamics as in the previous video that the differential of internal energy is the change in heat plus the change in work dq plus dw and from the second law the change in entropy ds is greater than or equal to the change in heat dq divided by t and therefore the heat is less than or equal to TDS, temperature times change in entropy. We also know that the differential of work is minus PDV, the external pressure times the change in volume of the system. And so combining these together, we have that the change in internal energy is less than or equal to TDS minus PDV. So taking this expression, we're going to subtract uh, TDS plus PDV from each side. So we're going to have DU minus TDS plus PDV is less than or equal to zero. So that's just algebraic rearrangement of this line up here. And now we're going to be concerned with uh, processes that occur at constant temperature and constant pressure. And we want to define a state function which is going to be less than or equal to zero for a spontaneous process that occurs under those conditions. So just as I did in the previous video, I'm going to start adding in some terms here which are just going to end up canceling. So we're going to have du minus TDS. Then I'm going to add in plus SDT here. And then I'm going to add plus <coughs> PDV. And then I'm going to add in this term plus VDP. And that's going to be less than or equal to zero uh, for our process there. But remember, we're going to enforce the criteria that delta T and delta P, the change in pressure and the change in temperature during these processes, is going to be zero. Also, DT and DP will be zero. So that means SDT will be zero because DT is zero means that VDP will be zero because DP is zero but because and that means that this expression is still the same as the one I wrote up there so this follows from that line but now you can see that I can define the differential of U minus TS plus PV is less than or equal to zero because DU is just DU D minus TS is minus TDS plus SDT and DPV is PDV plus VDP. So this line is equivalent to the previous line as well. So what we're going to define as a result here is going to be the Gibbs energy. So that's going to be DG is less than or equal to zero and G is going to be defined as internal energy minus temperature times entropy plus pressure times volume. So this is all provided that there is no change in pressure or temperature during this process and this would be the conditions for a spontaneous process. Now delta G is going to be the uh, state function that we're most concerned about for spontaneous chemical reactions because most chemical reactions are you know exposed to some type of temperature bath in the environment they're exposed to fairly constant pressure if they're open to the atmosphere so Gibbs the Gibbs energy is going to be the real state function which we're concerned about and is going to tell us whether or not chemical reactions or uh, chemical changes are going to be spontaneous or not under given conditions and then we'll just remember that that's defined as U minus TS plus PV. Okay, so to summarize that, well, again, we have G, which as we have in the title of the video, is the Gibbs energy. That is a state function. And that is going to decrease or stay the same in order for a process to be spontaneous under constant temperature and constant pressure. 
Okay, so we've got uh, lots of these state functions now. We've got internal energy, enthalpy, Helmholtz energy, Gibbs energy. So let's summarize those all for a second. We have H enthalpy, which is U plus PV. We have A, the Helmholtz energy, which is defined as U minus TS. We have G, the Gibbs energy, defined as U, well, I'm going to use TS first, so let's do that, U minus TS plus PV. And you'll notice because of this, it's kind of a combination of the Helmholtz and the, and the enthalpy part. So there's multiple ways we can define the Gibbs energy. We can define it as A plus PV, but the more interesting way, which it's generally shown as, which is interesting for us in terms of chemical reactions and chemical changes, is H minus TS. Enthalpy minus temperature times entropy. That's the formula you'll generally see in general chemistry, and then that gets turned into when you have some macroscopic change in your system, you have your delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. And again, that requires constant temperature and constant pressure. Okay, so we have all of those conditions there. So what other kind of things can we interpret this Gibbs energy as. We were able to interpret the Helmholtz energy as the maximum work the system could do as a result of some spontaneous process or the work which had to be put into the system for an, a non-spontaneous process to occur. It's spontaneous if the Helmholtz energy was less than zero and under these conditions we have a spontaneous process if the Gibbs energy is less than zero. So what can we do with that Gibbs energy if it is indeed less than zero? So if we take our differential here, dg, that's going to be equal to, well, we've got du minus tds minus sdt plus pdv plus vdp. But we also know that our du here can be replaced as we got it there, our TDS minus PDV. So we've got some terms that are going to cancel there. So this TDS cancels with that minus TDS. This PDV cancels with that minus PDV. So we've got some things left over there. So, and then the process is going to occur at constant temperature so dt is zero and at constant pressure. So dp is zero. So under these conditions, what is this stuff that's actually going to happen there? Well, we defined these terms here. Tds was the heat and minus pdv was the work. But this is only pressure volume work. That's mechanical work done by the expansion or the compression of the system. Uh, we can define other kinds of work, say non-pressure volume work. These could be things like electrical work. Um, don't have a lot of other examples because in chemistry it's usually just electrical work, um, the pushing of electrons through a wire to generate some type of current. And that's the, really the only other source of, of energy change there because we have to have some way for this energy to change in order for this uh, for our internal energy to change. We can't create or destroy energy. We have to create it or we have to just transfer it through some source. So non-pressure volume work, some type of other work, is what we can use for any types of changes in the Gibbs energy. So if I write this down, if we have a spontaneous process, if we have a spontaneous process which occurs at constant temperature and constant pressure, then the amount of Gibbs energy which is kind of released during that process can be used 
to do any kind of other work besides pressure volume work because we know that delta T, delta P, both going to be zero for that process. So if delta G is less than zero, then we can do this much absolute value of work um, in, in some type of system. We can use that work to generate electric current, those sorts of things. And if the Gibbs energy change is greater than zero during a process, then we need to input this amount of other kind of work into the system in order for that process to occur and in order for that process to be spontaneous.